Ah, good morning. How are you today? My name is Lisa Holse, and I am excited to be here and offer a few things that I've learned over the years of um, practicing different forms of movement and over the last decade practicing body work and really digging deep into the patterns that we hold in our body because of how we move and also because of how we don't move. So one of the things we often don't think about is that our bodies are incredibly dynamic. They're always adapting. Our cells and tissues are always adapting to the different stimulus or lack of stimulus that they're receiving. And a lot of what happens in our body as far as our posture goes happens in the moments when we actually aren't moving. When we're sitting, when we're standing, when we're sleeping, all sorts of things. <sighs> and um, of course then those patterns carry over into the times that we are moving and because of how we move and choose to move we also are developing and reinforcing different patterns and habits in our bodies and so over time some of those patterns are functional and really serve us in our bodies and what we want to do with our bodies and other times those patterns are not super functional and they lead to things like aches pains injuries chronic issues all sorts of things so I wanted to offer today a couple things, a couple stretches, kind of exercises that both stretch and strengthen and that are really meant to be precise, done super mindfully and to bring awareness into different parts of your body so that you can start to unravel some of those patterns in your posture that contribute to pain, ache, injury, illness, all sorts of things. <laughs> um, I'm going to focus today on the upper body because um, by nature we are upright beings and we have a tendency to kind of curl forward in the shoulders for all sorts of reasons. Of course, we're like working in front of ourselves all the time. We're driving, we're working on computers, we're holding things including babies <laughs> um, and small children. And we also have this like exposed underbelly, chest and heart and soft underbelly. And because we're walking upright in the world, when we feel some kind of emotional trigger, our postural tendency is often to curl forward to protect this part of us, our heart, our belly. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a protective me mechanism to, to kind of curl forward like this. So for all sorts of reasons, the shoulder girdles often start to curl forward. That puts a lot of strain in different parts of the body. And absolutely, this can be sourced from other areas. I find a lot of connection between the hips and the shoulders and the bodies that I've worked with and needing to kind of unravel stuff in the hips as well. Um, personally, I find I have a lot of sensation in the upper body, so it shows up for me as neck pain. Other people have issues with their shoulders. And um, I wanted to offer a couple different ways to start to release this area of the body so that you can really start to access and move in different ways um, and strengthen strengthen the posture so that you're, hold, you're able to hold your shoulders open and your chest open a little bit more without thinking about it. A lot of us tend to stretch, but there's no, there's no component of developing strength in the kind of opposing pattern or the opposing muscles to, to hold that posture once you've stretched and opened what you need to stretch and open. So I apologize, the sun is rising over the lake behind me here. I'm in a beautiful spot in the Northern Adirondacks and um, I am excited to share this. Let's get started with the first exercise. All right, so this first exercise is one that I do almost every morning. It's one of the first things that I do because I often wake up with like a stiff, achy neck. And for me, that's often because I'm still nursing my toddler and we sleep together and so I'm often contorted in all these crazy positions while we're sleeping. And, um, you know, people wake up with neck pain for all sorts of reasons, including what they do during the day, how they're sleeping at night, pillows, things like that. So I um, do this first thing in the morning almost every day and then I do it throughout the day whenever I notice that I'm starting to feel like tension and kind of crunched up and like I'm holding a lot of tension in my shoulders and neck. 
So let me just adjust this here. Um, I typically do this on the kitchen counter um, or bathroom counter or wherever I can get to first thing in the morning. I'm outside on this railing right now. If you only have a low surface, you can also do this like on a coffee table. You would just kneel instead of stand. And let's see here. All right, so on the surface that you have available, you're gonna put the soft side of your elbows, the back side of your elbows, and you want your elbows to be placed about shoulder width apart. We'll have the hands in prayer and then start sending your tailbone back so that your spine is nice and long. You'll want to, and you'll naturally kind of draw the belly up and in here, draw the belly button up towards the spine, engage the abdominal wall gently. And then in just a moment, I'm going to start to take a few deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling slowly. And on the exhale, I'm gonna to start to move a little deeper and deeper into this stretch. I like to stay dynamic throughout this posture. I don't just get to one spot and hold it. I allow my breath to move through my body and lift and expand, especially the back side of my rib cage. I'm sending the breath into when I breathe here. And the other things to think about are relaxing the jaw and keeping the head and neck as long and in line with the spine as possible. So I'm gonna put my head down here for a moment and just take a few deep breaths the final piece of this that really is what starts to engage and develop strength in the muscles of the backs of the arms and shoulders is to press gently into the backs of the elbows as you lower here and are taking deep breaths. And I say press gently on purpose because for most of us as we start to press into the elbows, our tendency in our posture and our breathing muscles is going to be to kind of clamp down and stop breathing. <laughs> so take note here, if you do take, um, if you stop breathing, make sure that you are taking deep breaths. And if that means you have to come up out of the stretch a little bit in order to put a little pressure on your elbows, then come up out of the stretch a little bit, come up a little further. We're all gonna start in different places. We all have different patterns happening in our bodies. So honor where you're at and find your edge and work there. So elbows, shoulder width apart, I'm gonna let my head come into alignment with my spine here. Look straight down. And then press gently into the backs of my elbows. And take a few deep breaths. I'm continuing to reach back through my tailbone. Forward through the crown of my head. Good, and then you can slowly release. The other things I was thinking about there are sliding my shoulder blades down the back of my ribs. So you want your neck to stay long and as in line as possible. And to do that, you'll wanna kind of draw the shoulders down the back side of your body, the shoulder blades down the back side of your body and look straight down so that you feel length in the back of your neck. And then again, as you press gently into the elbows, take a few deep breaths. I typically hold for about three full, slow breaths here. Again, kind of moving with the breath. And then I'll release, and then I'll do two more rounds of that. So the typical pattern for these type of really precise exercises is to do um, about three full deep breaths, nice and slow, and then do each exercise about three times. I'm just going to do it once here. Just pause the video and you can do two more times on your own. All right, for this next exercise, we're going to come down onto our backs. And this can just be on a rug or surface of any kind. If you're okay with um, a hard surface, then feel free to do that. Um, bring your knees about hip width apart, feet flat on the floor so your knees are bent. And then go ahead and lay your head down. I'm going to turn towards the camera just to speak. <clears throat> and then I'll turn my head to actually engage in this exercise. But we'll start with extending the arms from the shoulders at about shoulder height. It's going to look a little bit wonky here for me because of the angle of the camera. 
but you can just kind of turn to each side and check, make sure your hands and arms are extending kind of straight out from the shoulders. And then from there, with your palms facing up, we're just gonna bend the elbows. Sorry about the sun here, that sun flare is a little intense. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. My hands are like shooting light beams out into the world this morning. So here with the elbows and shoulder blades kind of tucked under your body, elbows about parallel to your shoulders, kind of perpendicular to the body. We're gonna draw the belly in again, gently engage the abdominal wall. And then I'm gonna turn my head here. Hopefully you can still hear. I'm gonna make the back of my neck nice and long tuck the shoulder blades under, and then I'm gonna press gently here into the backs of my elbows again. You'll notice as you start to press here that your chest naturally wants to rise. Allow that to happen, and take a nice big breath into the front of the chest and ribs. Your back will also kind of arch up off the floor, and you can take, again, three deep breaths. Relax the jaw. Keep energy moving out through all 10 fingers. And here you can press pretty strongly into the backs of the elbows as long as you feel like everything is staying open and that you're able to take that big full breath into the front part of the rib cage and chest. I'll do one more here just to give you a chance to do a second round yourself. Go ahead and check in with your elbows. Make sure they're about parallel to your shoulders. Tuck the shoulder blades under the body. Nice and open in the chest. Relax the jaw. Take a big inhale in and start pressing through the backs of the elbows energized through the palms and fingers. Keep the breath moving, nice big, full, slow breaths. Again, relax the lower jaw away from the upper jaw. Beautiful. You can just kind of release and relax in between. Again, I recommend three full slow breaths in each exercise as you hold and press and then take a break and do three rounds of that all together. All right. I'll give you a chance to pause the video and do one more round and then I'll show you the last. All right. Last exercise here is kind of an even more strengthening version of what we just did. So I'm gonna start with my knees a little bit wider than hip width apart. Big toes are together. And then if you were to draw a triangle with from your toes to the heels of your hands, we'll do that and place the hands wide with the fingertips pointing away. So my hands are a little bit out of frame here, but you can see I'm just gonna place it with my fingertips pointing away from midline so that my knees, legs, and hands are kind of forming this symmetrical triangle. I want my hands to be about shoulder distance from my hips because as we come forward, the hips are gonna be directly over the knees and you want your wrists and elbows in line with your shoulders. I'm gonna scoot mine forward just a little bit here. So we're nice and long through the torso here. Again, you wanna draw the shoulder blades down the back side of your body and look straight down so that the neck is nice and long. <clears throat> we're gonna take a nice deep breath in. You can breathe into the back side of your rib cage. And then on the exhale, start to lower just simply by bending the elbows. Pause at the bottom of your exhale. Take another nice big breath in. And then exhale, lower a little bit more. As you lower here, you're gonna notice you wanna shift the weight probably more into your legs. See if you can keep the weight balanced between the upper body and the lower body. 
Relax the jaw again. Allow yourself to come lower. And as you get to the lower, <laughs> lower position here, you're gonna start to feel yourself shake most likely. That's good, that's your nervous system kind of figuring out what's going on. Good, so just keep checking in with the jaw, the breath, the weight and where it's distributed. Oh, my hand slipped. All right, I've taken about three full breaths there, so I'm gonna take a short break, and then I think I'm gonna do all three rounds with you here because this one has a few more components going on and it's a little bit trickier to get all the pieces. Um, the last piece that you can kind of incorporate as you're working here is to press down through your palms and away from midline. Your hands aren't gonna move, your body's not gonna move, but it's simply an energetic kind of pressure into the floor as if you wanna like spread the floor apart with your hands. And that'll just kind of engage the muscles of the hands, forearms, arms, shoulders even more and stabilize you. Um, this is also a really good stretch. A lot of people feel this as a really good stretch through the forearms and wrists. So if you are on a phone or on a computer, this will help to open up the palms and forearms and wrists. All right, let's do another round. Again, fingertips point directly away from midline, wrists and elbows in line with the shoulders. You don't want to have your hands forward of your shoulders like this or behind your shoulders like this. See if you can get them nice and square with the shoulder. <clears throat> and then we'll start to, to breathe. Go ahead and breathe into the back body. Belly is drawing in and then exhale to lower. Elbows continue to draw forward. Keep the elbows directly over the wrists here. Relax the jaw. Again, press down and away from midline through the palms. Let yourself shake. You might even shift your weight just slightly until you find the place where you start to tremble. Right, that was about three breaths for me and I say that to find the place where you start to tremble because that's again where your nervous system sorry about this light your nervous system is really starting to figure out a new pattern and you'll probably start to feel that this front part of your arm and chest is opening and the back side is starting to strengthen so let's do one more round I'll do this one with you. <clears throat> and I won't say much, we'll just do it together. Go ahead and take a nice big breath in to start. Exhale, lower. Elbows drawing forward over the wrists. Jaws relaxed, tailbone reaches up and back, belly's engaged. Keep the breath moving, three full slow breaths. Beautiful. All right, thank you for practicing these few simple but really precise and mindful exercises with me. I really believe in, again, after years of working with bodies and my own body, um, I have just found that shifting these kind of patterns in our posture and putting our bodies in these more functional shapes can really benefit us in so many ways. And I find for me that it's most effective to do this before any other kind of exercise or movement. So if you're a runner or a biker or a climber or a skier or a hiker or whatever you do, if even if you just are playing with your kids and working at a desk, nursing a baby, <laughs> um, try to do these exercises before you move into that movement. And you can even take breaks. They're great. You can do them almost anywhere. And they're great to give you a little break from whatever pattern you've been holding yourself in, whether you're moving or not. Um, 
again, we have all of these kind of patterns in our tissues and if we just jump into the exercise that we are in the habit of doing or creating a habit doing and we're not paying attention to how we're holding our body as we move through those motions, um, we essentially could be creating an issue in the body without even realizing it. And so it's important to take a moment to not only stretch but start to strengthen and shift these patterns in the posture before you move and after <laughs> um, so that you can keep your body and joints in a healthier healthier shape healthier condition and prevent injury over the time over time um, the last thing I wanted to offer this morning isn't really an exercise but this is like a little bonus kind of trick that I've learned. <laughs> um, and that's for this front part of the chest, especially these attachments of the pectoralis muscles um, that move through the shoulder or to, yeah, through the shoulder. Um, and so I typically do this in front of a mirror because it's really incredible how, how much of a change it creates with this kind of silly little thing. But what you wanna do is kind of just let your arm be heavy and with the opposite side hand, like just make a little crab grasp here and dig your thumb into the into the tissue just above you'll find this kind of little ropey ropey section where the attachments of the muscles move through the shoulder and over to the arm here and you'll want to get a nice good hold on that little ropey section <laughs> um, and then just start to shake it let your arm be as heavy as possible I'm just gonna kind of agitate it, move it around. It might be super tender. So just kind of do what you can. Don't be afraid of a little bit of sensation because often that is what it indicates something is shifting and changing. Of course, if it's painful or hurts your shoulder or hand in any way, just take a break, don't do this. <laughs> Whatever you need, take care of yourself. But otherwise, just kind of get crazy with it. <laughs> agitate the heck out of that, that little bundle of tissue. I'm going to do the best I can here. I'm usually standing when I do this and again just try to keep that arm heavy, relaxed. Let's see here. So yeah, that even wasn't very much but you can see that this shoulder is resting a little bit lower than this shoulder. <laughs> and this is the cool thing about this one is that you can see the visible difference, the visible effect of it right away. So. We're just kind of agitating these muscles to release the fascia and relax it and open it up a little bit more, which in turn releases the, releases the shoulder from this tension pattern in the neck. I'm gonna do the other side really quick. Stay even, you always wanna stay even <laughs> side to side. Even if you have an injury or that you're, you're tending something with extra care on one side, make sure you're addressing both sides because everything is connected by the fascia in our body and the, the patterns and trains of motion and uh, movement in our body or lack of movement <laughs> are real. Everything is attached to everything else in indirect and direct ways. So again, we're just kind of grabbing that ropey bundle, agitating, agitating it, shake it, roll it around. You can massage it a little bit. This feels weird. <laughs> It feels funny. Um, see if I can even out my shoulders though. All right, even again. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful. And um, I think that's it for today. If there's any questions that you have about any of this stuff, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to respond. And I hope you feel a little bit more open in your neck, shoulders, chest. Again, practice this as, as frequently as possible or as needed. And I do highly recommend starting out your day with it because it just takes a few minutes once you do and get in the habit of doing it. It really just takes a few minutes to do these and it can make a huge difference in how you carry yourself and how you move throughout the day. Lead with the open heart and um, many blessings to you. Oh, the last thing I do want to add is that because we're working with opening this heart space and shifting the posture around the heart space, this can feel really, really tender for the heart. And 
you may have emotions come up as you practice these exercises. I just noticed as I released these that some like something started to come up for me, so I wanted to make sure to say this. Carrying ourselves and leading with a wide open heart in the world, you know, as we move through the world and stand in the world is a more vulnerable place to be than most of us are used to. And just take note of that. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you need to be frightened. It just means that something's shifting. We are more intentionally opening the heart and moving into the world with an open heart. And in my personal opinion, that's what the world needs right now. So um, if you're doing this work and have emotions come up, allow them to move through your body. Allow yourself to experience them. Maybe take note if anything pops into your mind around you know, where the emotion's coming from or what it's related to because most likely it is related to that thing or that experience. And yeah, just be gentle and kind with yourself. Allow your shoulders to open, which in turn allows the heart to open and um, allows you to connect more, more wholly and openly with other people and the experiences you're having throughout your day. All right, again, many blessings. Take care.